Hi friends, my name is Jessica and I'm a second year doctoral student studying nursing practice. And in today's video, I want to talk about becoming a psychiatric nurse right after nursing school. So I know that there is a lot of advice when you are a nurse in nursing school. You often hear things like you should go into med surge or you're going to have to go into a rehab. Or, you know, a lot of people say that you need medical experience and you shouldn't go straight into psych because you will lose all your nursing skills. Nurses on a psychiatric unit actually do use medical skills and this may be dependent on the unit specifically. So more psychiatric units are moving towards incorporating more medical treatments. And this is because patients with underlying psychiatric issues do receive better care on a psychiatric unit because you know they can move amongst the unit, they're not confined to a room or a bed. It's much better management for them, so a lot of psychiatric units are now offering medical care as well. So if you want to be a psychiatric nurse and you want to also have some medical skills, it's important when you're looking at different places to apply that you ask about these things because I would assume that it is different within every unit, but the unit that I work in, we do do some medical things. So things that you would do in a psychiatric unit, you know, we do IVs, we do dressing changes, we do push meds and emergencies. We do catheterize patients, but of course it's gonna be a lot rarer than over in medicine, but it does occur. In a psychiatric setting, you're gonna give all different kinds of meds. You're gonna give nebulizing treatments, IM meds. You're gonna give different PO medications, narcotics. Um, you know, you're giving all different types of meds. It's also really great too, because if you start off in psych, you're going to understand things that you might not see in medicine. So for example, you may not be giving a Vivitrol shot over on a medical unit, um, but that is something we would give in the psychiatric unit. And you know, a Vivitrol shot has a two inch needle. It's huge. There's a certain way that you have to give it a lot of these meds. There are certain ways that they have to be given or reconstituted. And of course you're gonna see reconstitution of meds over on medical units, of course, but you're gonna see more specific psych meds in the psychiatric unit. So even if you did work in medicine and you came over to psych, there are going to be things that you haven't seen or done because they're things that are for the most part psych specific that they may not be doing over on the medical unit. So if psychiatric nursing is what you love, you've already put yourself through the hard work of nursing school. So number two is that on a psychiatric unit, you are providing medical care, again, because there's codes. And when a code happens, the code team is not on the unit. You know, they're five minutes away, at least at my hospital, and my hospital is not that big. So, I mean, when you're talking a big hospital as well, you may be in a psychiatric unit that does not have a code team, that, that is not part of a hospital that is a freestanding building. And codes happen pretty often. I, you know, it's not like a once a month thing. And when a code occurs, it is important for the nurse to understand what to do. And this is the training that you'll get when you're on a psychiatric unit. So codes could be head bleeds because of a fall due to medication side effects with blood pressure. They could be seizures. You know, some of these psychiatric meds do lower the seizure threshold. You do have people detoxing off of certain substances. If psychiatric patients do have comorbidities, some of them are receiving minimal, if any, medical care outside of the hospital, especially if they are very delusional or psychotic. They've maybe been homeless. You know, they haven't showered in months you know, they're not going and getting adequate medical care. They're barely caring for themselves. So at that point, they can throw a clot. They can have a super high blood sugar from having unmanaged diabetes. They, you know, there's so many different things that can occur. And when a code occurs, you're a medical nurse. Like you're dealing with that seizure that's happening. You're doing CPR in a code blue. You know, there's so many medical things that occur when a code is happening. You know, some of these patients, their medications can drop their blood pressure. They can just have other medical conditions that were untreated that's causing a low blood pressure. So, I mean, there's been times you take a blood pressure on a patient and it's 30 over 50 and they're pale white. And you're like, oh damn, now I have to be a medical nurse. You know what I mean? So 
Psych is exciting because you get to be the medical nurse and you get to be the psych nurse. And I feel that psych nursing gets a bad rep. Like everyone's like, psych nurses aren't real nurses. We are real nurses. Like The next thing that makes psychiatric nurses real nurses is that we are constantly doing assessments. And we learn this all through nursing school. Assess your patient, assess your patient. It is the same thing in psych. We are always assessing our patients because medications have side effects. We need to watch for those. And sometimes our patients can't voice that they may be feeling a certain way or not feeling well or just getting a weird feeling in their body. Sometimes they can't voice that to us. So it's up to us to be assessing. Are they walking funny? Are they looking pale? You know, do they look like they're diaphoretic? Like these are things that we have to always be assessing. We also have to be assessing for behaviors. Are they hallucinating? Are they seeing things? Are they having negative thoughts? But specifically with the medical aspect of it, we have to be assessing them medically. And that's because there are two major side effects that we definitely have to watch for, which are serotonin syndrome and neuromalignancy syndrome. These occur from the psychiatric medications that are prescribed and they can be lethal. So we need to be assessing for those signs and symptoms. Uh, You probably saw this in nursing school, but serotonin syndrome, it has an abrupt onset. You're going to see the increase in hypertension, tachycardia, tachypnea. They might have moderate hyperthermia. They get diaphoretic. They have a tremor, pupil dilation, increased reflexes. They may have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. And for serotonin syndrome, these are going to be with patients that are taking medications that increase their serotonin. Now with neuroleptic malignance syndrome, it's gonna be a gradual onset, prolonged course. You're gonna also see that hypertension, tachycardia, tachypnea. You're gonna see a really high hypothermia with them. They're also gonna be diaphoretic and they're going to have lead pipe rigidity. And this is that their joints are really tight. So like if you try to move their arm like this, it's not gonna flow. You're gonna feel like a click like that. And they're gonna have normal pupils. So all of these things we have to watch for because if you don't see these things, the patient could have a terrible end result. So we have to be assessing for these things. Of course, then you also have to assess for other type of medication side effects, Stephen Johnson syndrome, increases in blood pressure, increases in heart rate, all of these things, which always be watching for. Additionally, like we spoke about earlier, a lot of these patients don't have adequate medical care outside of the hospital. Oftentimes when they come to us, this is the first experience that they're having in a very long time of receiving any medical care. So we have to be assessing their lab work. They may have an underlying psychiatric issue, but it may be influenced by an underlying infection or an underlying condition. There, you know, people who have liver cirrhosis, if their ammonia levels go high, I mean, they get really loopy. And same with elderly people when they have UTIs, you know, it can present like a psychiatric symptom, but it could actually just be um, an infection. Or, you know, I've seen patients that do have um, a psychiatric condition, which includes hallucinations and things like that. But under that, they also have a really bad infection that's just making these symptoms even worse and so they may seem like they're not responding to the psychiatric medications but it's because they have an underlying infection that we also need to treat so as the nurses we need to be able to understand the labs see the labs notify the physicians of the results that we see that may look like there's something else going on the next point i would like to make is that the sooner you start working in psych the more you get experience working with psych patients and you're going to pick up on certain things So for example, you're gonna learn in time that psychosis presents in a certain way. You get the experience being in there and seeing things hands-on, but the only way I can kind of explain it is you'll see certain patients that you're like, that doesn't present like normal psychosis. Like you'll you'll look you'll just know like that just doesn't seem like something else is going on there. It's really kind of difficult to explain. I think when you see regular psychosis, you know, you do see the hallucinations, changes in behavior. It's kind of like like a stable psychosis is like the way I would explain it. There are certain patients that sometimes come in that they say are you know psychotic at first but when you really look at them they're not they may have moments of clarity they may from one second they go really nice to like really bad and then they're apologize it's just very 
up and down I don't know I think listening to this you're probably like this sounds like psychosis but when you see it all the time there are certain patients that stand out to you that you're like this doesn't really present like psychosis and we find with those patients that when we dig a little deeper there's more to it and of course you know doctors are great at identifying this they have tons of experience however as the nurse we're the ones with the patients all the time like the entire shift so we're the ones that can kind of be like well I noticed this or this just seems strange to me and it might let the doctor know oh this is something maybe I should investigate further um so you know that's really great like the psych experience is so important because you can use that intuition to pick up on certain things and when i think of these situations that have happened in the past patients may present as psychosis but then they end up having prion disease or they end up having a type of encephalopathy and you know these are things that you're not going to know unless you do specific tests and you don't always do those tests for every single psychotic patient. You know, if the nurse is assessing and noticing that something doesn't seem right, this is something that the doctor may investigate further doing those types of assessments. And the last point of why you should work in psych is because the longer you work in psych, the better you get at de-escalating patients and forming therapeutic alliances. And this is a skill that I think that you build over time. Some people are naturally gifted at creating therapeutic alliances but definitely being in the psychiatric setting you just get more accustomed you get you become a better psych nurse so in summary of this video if being a psychiatric nurse is your dream in the field that you want to go into don't waste time in other settings just to add something to your resume definitely apply get into psychiatric nursing and you're going to learn so much and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're thinking about going into psychiatric nursing and you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. I love the thought of anyone going into psychiatric nursing because it's the best. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below.